All right, so now let's continue further. And now let's look at the geometric characterization of A cross B. Actually, uh, not A cross B, more like theorem two. So geomet geometric characterization of theorem two, which is this right here. Uh, it's just this formula right here. So, yeah, so if we write these lengths out and then also this angle, number sine angle, uh, this would look like this. Let's just draw this out. Let's say you had A as a vector pointing out, I'll, I'll point it out like this. Here's a vector A. There's A like that. Let's say you had B pointing out like this. This is B. And then the angle theta is between here and here. Goes like that. So, and then the geometric interpretation of, well, you have the length uh, like this. Okay, so you have the length here is the a length. Let's leave it like that. But now this length right here, this is equal to, well, just using Pythagoras, Pythagorean theorem, the opposite over adjacent is going to be sine. So in other words, sine theta equals to this uh, yeah, opposite op over, uh, over hypotenuse, I mean. In other words, and then you can move this over, and then you're going to have this part right here, the opposite. It, which is just going to be, well, we all know this is just going to be the length of a of, of b times by sine theta. Like that. And I'll just, uh, I'll put that here. So, uh, recall Pythagorean theorem. Or actually, uh, it's pretty straightforward. I'll just, I'll just put this uh, recall. You'll have sine theta equals to opposite over hypotenuse, in this case, b. Move it over like that, and then you get this. All right, so that's what we have there. And here, just move it downwards there. And now, so we have that length there. And now if we draw this out like this, draw a perfect uh, parallelogram like this, or not exactly like that, make it like this, and this is all parallel, parallel. Yeah, just make it parallel. It's pretty straightforward. It's parallel. And so that uh, this whole area here and this whole length here, this times by by this height there, that's just the area of this parallelogram. And again, this is just uh this is exactly you could view it as a rectangle that's shifted. Just a rectangle that's shifted. So in other words, a a times this. A times the height, the uh, length times height is equal to the area of the uh virtual re rectangle or the uh, uh the stretched rectangle or just a, just the uh Tilted rectangular parallelogram over there. All right, here I just uh, move things over, and now if I uh, continue further, so if A and B vectors are uh, represented by directed line segments with the same initial point, as as I just drew here, then they determine a parallelogram with base right here. The the length is the uh, um, is the length of this vector A. Altitude or the height here of B sine theta, and area is just going to be well, area is just going to be uh, like this equals to the length a times by the length b sine theta. So basically, length times height of this uh, this twisted uh, rectangle, like that. And this is just equal to well, yeah, this is just the theorem two. So that's just theorem two. So this uh, uh, length of a times length of b times sine theta. And this just equals to the uh, length of the cross product, a, b. So you can see the length of the cross product, the geometric interpretation is the area of this parallelogram, which is absolutely fascinating. All right, let's erase that. And that is what we have. Yeah, so uh, thus we have the following way of interpret interpreting the magnitude of a cross product. And that is the length of the cross product, a, cross B is equal to the area of the parallelogram determined by A and B. So you have a parallelogram like this, draw this across where these are parallel, 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 like that. And there's a parallelogram. All right, and now the, this brings us to example three. So this one states, find a vector perpendicular to the plane that passes through the points P146, Q, negative two, five, negative one, and r one negative one and one. So let's take a look at the solution. So the vector pq. So look at pq uh, cross product. Get the vector pq cross pr is perpendicular to both pq and pr. 
and is therefore perpendicular to the plane through P, Q, and R. So again, we were asked to find a cross product passes through these right here, or vector, or we're asked to find a vector that passes through these, and one way is obviously the, the uh, cross product. And just to illustrate here, so we have the points P1, P1, uh, P4, 6, uh, yeah, P, Q, and, and R. Let's just graph these out. Let's just uh, illustrate this in 3D, just to grasp it. So I had to do initially just to grasp what they're talking about. <laughs> Let's say we had Y here, and there's a Z. There's the X axis. And let's draw the point P. P is 1, 4, 6. We have 1. And then goes up one, two, three, four, and then six. So it goes one, two, three, four, five, six. Somewhere across there. And it's gonna go up like this. Yeah, it's gonna be somewhere across here. Just write that try that there. Like this, and then dot dot dot. Like that. This is P. Alright, so that's P, and let's look at Q. Q is uh negative two. 5 and 1. So we go with negative 2. It goes like this. 1, 2. And that's negative. And it goes forward 5. This is 5. This is 4. It goes over across here. Like that. And then it goes uh, negative 1. It goes down 1. And yes, yeah, it's going to go down 1. But here. Like that. So it's going to be somewhere here. It's Q. Like that. Next setup is R is 1, negative 1, and 1. All right, so R is 1, and then it goes backwards 1, like that, like this. And let's fix this better, make this better, like that. Okay, and it goes backwards 1, and it goes uh, up 1. So it goes like this. So it's going to be. Here, this is P Q R, like that. All right. So now what I'm gonna do is, well, uh, we want the vectors P Q and P R. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna shift this. Uh, I'm gonna write this in red. P Q is like this. So if you have the vector P Q, this is P Q, like that. Or actually, well, actually, yeah. This this uh, isn't uh, typically called P Q, but this is a uh, just a vector like this. In vector, this is going to be the PR uh, placement there. But then what we're going to do is we're going to shift this over here. If we recall from earlier video, if we shift this here and make it exactly parallel to that, uh, exactly this setup here, this one here, this is going to be our PQ. So, so the PQ vector or position vector starting from the origin. So we can uh, do some uh, calculations with it. The next one is going to be the setup here parallel with this one. This is our PR. Like that. So just recall from that earlier video on this. All right, so now let's continue on this. And uh, again, this uh, brings us our attention to my earlier video. So recall from my earlier video on vectors that the position vector A of the point P can be written as follows. And this is again when we're given two points and it's parallel to it. So if you have given the points A, which is x1, x2, you know, x, y, and z, or x1, uh, y1, z1, etc. In this case, here's our A, and B, which is X2, Y2, Z2. So in this case, yeah, so this is our B right here. So there's A and there's B. Uh, the vector A with representation AB so is, uh, is going to be given by this A vector. So it's actually going to be over here. Uh, this equals to AB, like that. And this equals to the difference between these two. So X2 minus X1, Y2 minus Y1. And then if you have the B right here, if you subtract these, X plus uh, A1, uh, and then subtract it by this X, you're just going to be left with this A1, A2, A3, and you're going to be left with here. So in other words, we get a parallel, uh, we just shift this over to here, and this is the position vector of this point P, which is exactly just AB. So this A equals to AB. So that's exactly what we're doing here. So we have to move this down here and then take the dot product, I mean the cross product of that. All right, so now we have that. Let's continue further. So thus, from the above formula, we know that the position vectors P, Q, and P, P, R, R, and well, we let's just write these down. And uh, let's just write these down. Here's P one four six negative two five negative one, and so on. Let's just write them down here so we don't need to keep scrolling up. So P 
is e the position of the point P is one four six, and then Q. Put a bra a comma there. Q is negative two five one, negative one, negative two five, and then this is negative one, like that. And then and then the next one is R. R was if I remember one negative one and one, and that's just going to be yeah one negative one and one negative two five negative one and one four six. So we have all this. So then this means that position vector PQ from the origin when we shift it over there is going to equal to this equals to and again using this formula we just subtract them there's just a difference there and then we could write them from starting from the origin so pq we, we subtract uh negative two and we could write this in uh the calculus book just writes this in the um ijk notation or the standard basis vector notation so what we could do here is a negative two minus one i and then plus, and we're going to have 5 minus 4. So 5, the Q there, 5 minus 4, J. Like that. And the next one's going to be R. I mean, not R. The next one's going to be this uh, Z, Z components. Uh, negative 1 minus 6. Negative 1 minus 6. K, like that. This equals 2 negative 3i, like that, plus j, because 5 minus 4 is, is 1. Next one is negative 1 minus 6 is 7. Neg negative 7. Negative 7k, like that. So that's, that is our pq. Now we got to get the other point pr, and pr is going to be, again, it's p to the r. We just shift this, uh, write the position vector from the origin. Then these are just parallel. So if you get one that's perpendicular to this, it's going to be perpendicular to this. In other words, you just stick it out. So if you have a vector sticking out like that, the cross product crosses both of them. All right, let's continue further. And the next one is PR. PR, like that. This equals 2. So PR, so we're going to go 1 minus 1, 1 minus 1, and this is going to be I, plus the J1 is negative 1 minus 4 j and then the next one is going to be uh 1 minus 6 1 minus 6 a so this equals 2 well we have this is zero so we could get rid of that next one's negative 1 minus 4 is negative 5 j next one is going to be 1 minus 6 is negative 5 hey like that so we have all this and let's just box it out. Next step is, well, we just take the cross product. All right, so now that we have this, and we compute the cross product of these vectors. So in other words, we get this PQ, like that, cross PR vectors. This equals two, and write this in the, in the determinant format. We have the IJK, so we have I here, j here and then k here like that and then the i the first one's gonna be negative three one negative seven negative three one negative seven next setup is gonna be is well zero and then negative five negative five and uh now we could just uh solve all this well remember the first part's gonna be we look at this and then we just turn this uh this multiplied by this do it all in one go instead of writing it all out. This multiply by this and then subtract by this. All right, so let's cross these out and we're gonna get one minus negative five. I mean, one times negative five is gonna be negative five minus this one's gonna be positive. Yeah, negative seven times uh, negative five is gonna be plus 35, so just minus 35 like that. I next setup is well, this and this. So we get negative 3 times negative 5. So we get, and this is going to be a minus. So minus negative 3 times negative 5 is going to be plus 15 minus negative 7 times 0, 0. This is j, like that. And let's erase this and, and this. Next setup is this and this, like that. This is going to be plus, and then so negative 3 times negative 5 
is again going to be 15, and then minus 1, minus 0, 0. Like that, then we can just get rid of this. All right, now this equals to, well, negative 40 i minus 15 j plus 15 k, like that. And that is our vector. And this is perpendicular to that plane. All right, so let's continue further. So yeah, so the vector negative 40, negative 15, and positive 15 is perpendicular to the given plane. And any non-zero scale or multiple of this vector, such as negative 8, negative 3, and 3 is also perpendicular to the plane. In other words, the scale or multiple, you're going to make it smaller, shrink, I mean, it's smaller, bigger. It's always going to be perpendicular to that. And again, we just shifted this, uh, this plane over to this side here. And if you get through, if it's one perpendicular to it, it's also perpendicular to this one too. And you scale it multiple all the way through it. Anyways, just uh, erase this. One more. And I think I got rid of it. All right, we got rid of all those. And let's continue further. And also just calculation check here. This is a scalar multiple. So negative 40 uh, divided by negative 8 is equal to 5. So negative 15 divided by negative 3 is equal to 5. And then 15 divided by 3 is 5. So in other words, this, this is all dividing these out by 5. So yeah, scalar multiple of 1 over 5. Anyways, let's continue further. So example 4. Find the area of the triangle with vertices P as 1, 4, 6, Q is negative 2, 5, negative 1, and R is, is 1, negative 1, 1. In other words, it says find the triangle, find the area of the triangle of these vertices, and that's exactly uh, this setup here. These, these are the same coordinates, and it's just saying find this triangle. <laughs> as opposed to, well, you guessed it, the parallelogram. So they're saying as opposed to that, so you're going to have to go find the area of the parallelogram, divide by two. Remember, that's just a uh, parallelogram is just a uh, two triangles. All right. So uh, let's look at the solution. So in the example, we computed PQ uh, cross PR vectors equal to negative 40, negative 15, and 15. The area of the parallelogram with adjacent sides, P, Q, and P, R, is the length of this cross product. Remember, that's the length of the parallelogram. So in other words, yeah, in other words, we just take the length, and we know the length formula. That This is the parallelogram. Then we're going to have to divide by 2 in a bit. So P, Q, uh, cross P, R, the length, or absolute value, is equal to square root. And using the length formula, it's just going to be, well, negative 40 squared plus negative 15 squared plus 15 squared, like that. And if you plug this into the calculator, you're going to get a 5 square root 82. And uh, before we go further, let's do a quick calculation check. So here's uh, with the, my OneNote uh, uh, program has a built-in calculator. So we go negative 40 squared plus negative 15 squared plus 15 squared equals to this. Let's put a equals space. So 2050. And now what we'll do is, well, 2050, 2050 divided by 25, that equals actually 82. Let's see, it's a factor of 25. So in other words, 2050 square root, or the power of uh, 1 half is just going to equal to 25 times 82, which equals to, remember, yeah, 25 times 82 is equal to 2050. And then, and then this is all square root. And then in other words, and if you square root 25, that's just 5 times 5. So that equals 5 times square root 82. So yes, 5 times square root of 82. Like that. That's what we have. Write a better 8, 2. And uh, the area of the triangle PQR is half the area of this parallelogram that is 5 divided by 2 times square root of 82, or 82 to the power of 1 half. So in other words, uh, if we have PQ like this, and PR, and then this is a parallelogram like that, double, double, parallel to this, then the area is going to be 1 half that. So half and half, and then we get a triangle. And that was the, we were asked to get PQR, uh, triangle there. So find the area of the triangle, the vertices, P, Q, R, etc.